Welcome team to the Road to Sub 60, a series that will help you understand the principles on how to build a hybrid training program. And this isn't just for the sport of high rocks. In fact, it can be used across a range of sports, feats or endeavors. Before I became a professional chef, I'd actually completed a master's in exercise science and in turn allowed me to become a strength and conditioning coach for a number of athletes and professional teams. So now I'm going to put all that skill set, all those experiences into one series for you guys to learn. So follow along because this series is actually for you to complete your journey along the way. This is day one, the new training program. No longer am I doing ultras and long runs and we're focusing our full attention on the sport or hybrid training modality, particularly for me, for high rocks. See, I wanna go as best as I can, maybe go sub 60. And I'm sure a lot of you relate to this, but growing up playing weekend sport, this is somewhat like the type of training we did. I was actually pretty decent at it. It's what got me into this area of performance. All right, Powerball is underway, so you know the rules. And we're gonna cover testing and the importance of doing so. Now, testing is something I live by for whatever form of, say, skill or you know performance adaptation you want to achieve because you need to know where you started. You also need to, what I love to call, find your weakness. You see, it's really important to find the numbers because they first can help periodize your training program, and I'll explain that more in upcoming episodes, but you'll also get marginal gains by only working on your strengths. So by finding a weakness, you have a greater potential for performance improvement. And that is why we're gonna focus on finding our weakness today. We're gonna to work on the squat, bench, and also the deadlift, uh, our wattage effort for 30 seconds, and then we're actually gonna first kick off with my five kilometer time trial. So that's first up. I've got my power bowl now. I'm gonna smash this, and then we're gonna get into it in a couple of hours. All right, team, we're about to do our five kilometer time trial. We're down here by the seaport, right by the seaport museum. It's a great viewpoint for Brooklyn Bridge. If you've never been down here before, highly recommend it. And we're gonna do a two and a half K out and back loop, total of five Ks. Now, the idea behind this is you are working to test your endurance or your aerobic base. It's gonna build up lactate in your legs, along with your respiratory and your lungs. It's gonna be pretty hard. So the idea here is you get a number at the end. I'm gonna try to go sub 20 total time, ideally getting 3.59 minutes per kilometer or less. And at the end, I will then be doing obviously a lot of work to build that time to be less. So obviously want to reduce my time under 20 significantly throughout the course of my program. So give this one a go. Let me know your time in the comments below. Three, two, one. Go. Dan's going for a little run, so I'm gonna go grab a coffee now. <laughs> A Slife K time trial is grueling. You go out as hard as you can for about 20 minutes, and as a result, your heart rate is elevated, your lactate in your legs is built up like you can't believe. You don't want to hit it too hard too early, but if you cross that finish line with anything left, you'll be disappointed. Nineteen forty-one team, pretty stoked. So that's sub twenty. That's what I wanted, um, and now I can use that number to build out my periodization. So essentially, I'll understand what I should be aiming for per kilometer when I'm doing certain types of models, whether it be three minutes at a three fifty-nine kilometer pace with uh, you know a, a ninety-second rest. Those are the kind of things that you'll start building once you know what number it is you're starting at. And later today, we're gonna to be doing the same for our strength. So doing our strength testing. So I'm gonna take a couple of hours rest now, drink up, plenty of G1M and also electrolytes, and then eat, uh, jump in the boots hey. before heading to MPA and then do our strength testing. Yeah, let's see how you do under pressure. Oh. Yeah, I've been wanting this shit forever. I've been in the field with whatever they throw at me. Brush it off, pick myself up, moving on to the better. All right, team, so we've done our 5K. So we've established that. Now we have to establish our absolute strength. So what that means, we have to test a couple of key maneuvers that are relevant to the output that we want to be doing on the field, or in this case, on the high rocks arena. 
Uh, for me, that is understanding my squat, my bench, and also my deadlift. For you, if you're not looking for absolute strength, you may be looking for relative strength. So it could be max amount of pull-ups you can do or max amount of push-ups. You can even add weight to either of those as well. The point here is to establish that foundation. So know where you are, so you're finding your weakness. But then from there, you can then use that number to help periodize as a percentage of your reps and sets and your scheme. So more on that later, but first things first is we need to start stacking on some weight warming up and getting into what our one RM is. Back. We're looking at a barbell good morning, which we're putting in here as skill work today, meaning we don't want to load it up too much. We just want to do it really well, almost use it like an additional warm up to what we've just done. And then we're going into our dual kettlebell hang clean. That's the one where you're going to get nice and active. All right, we want to move fast with that one. You can test it out with a little bit of weight. Uh, Jesse Diamond and from Melbourne today. Always like to keep myself fit. You know, played footy growing up, and as soon as I stopped playing footy, I just wanted to keep myself fit. So I was in gym and that sort of led to me studying it as soon as I left high school. And then um, since moving to New York, I've actually only now just transitioned into it full time. Um, so I run a semi-private strength training program for the athletic clubs um, called APS, Advanced Performance Squads. Um, and that pretty much all complies with most of my time now. This is why testing has been crucial because you get percentages of what your one RM is and you're working to that number. So it's 85 to 90% of you one around it, you then adjust your either your, your sets or your reps or even the tempo, even the amount of extra half reps in between each actual rep itself. So you can start to adjust like your, your specific volume to increase your what's called your progressive overload or adapt. Jessica Lay from Melbourne, Australia. Yeah, head of programming and member experience. I know a lot of gyms and it's a big buzzword to say community these days, but I haven't been any part of any gym that does it better than basic. So when you join, um, as you would know now, you join into a squad, um, we really value consistency. So it's the same people every single class that you come to, which is great for not only training, um, getting consistency with your routine, but making new friends. So, um, weights, just so you are aware. RX for guys, 50, RX for our ladies is 35. But you can obviously scale accordingly. So 20 minutes of 10 anchoring and press. All right, so 10 anchoring and press. So if you are starting with the weights by your side, already have to come off the ground. Okay, slight little dip, clean, overhead press. All right, ideally, we just pick a machine and each of us will pick that machine. I reckon. What you did your test on, if it works out, is uh, a, essentially an endurance Metcon test. So once you finish your reps, make sure you remember your numbers, because we will retest again. You are going through as many as you can in 20 minutes. So you've got your 10, 10 hand clean press, 15 cows, and then finish your back dumbbell set you started on, and you got alternating snatch. Cool? Cool. 20 total, 10 each arm. the day away, guys. 35. So, again, again, adjust accordingly. I'm trying to think of the women's equivalent of what, where are those weights coming to high rocks? They don't. They don't. All you gotta say is yes, yes. That's all you gotta say. Shit team, that went, that went quickly, right? Six rounds, 45 pounders. You use six pull downs, nothing else? Oh, yeah, just six shot, yeah, six shot rounds. Yep. Um, yeah, 45 pound dumbbells and a skier. 
Been, we're working hard, so we're like tacking on most of our conditioning work at the end of uh, at the end of our strength session. So we're sort of we're pretty fatigued by the time we actually start getting into it. So, but uh, I feel great after every session. Just gonna make sure we keep prioritizing recovery if we're gonna be cracking in this hard. And um, so it's just for me, it feel good. Just remember, like this is, a, this is part of it, but you know that's 20 minutes, and that's the same concept of when you start out high rocks. It's so like when you start out, your heart rate, just like you get excited, you jolt, but then you get into a rhythm. So as daunting as like those weights are, obviously they're still fucking heavy, but after a while you just, you're in your rhythm, you're in your element. I feel like it's a marathon when you do the first 5Ks and you're like, how the hell am I going to finish this? And then yeah. like, you just, your body gets into rhythm. Yeah, yeah actually, that was exactly what happened to me at high Really? I was like, after the sleep push, I was like, I'm completely fucking done here. Yeah. Right now. And then I was like laughing. And yeah, yeah, just, like, yeah, yeah. Team, that is episode one in the can for the new road to sub 60. So key things from this episode, hopefully you learned how to do testing because the importance of retesting is so important and using those numbers to periodize your program, which in the upcoming episodes we'll definitely touch on. That's a percentage of your lifts because then eventually you want to be doing what's called progressive overload. Yeah. None of that for now, but in the next episode, I'm going to be joining Hunter McIntyre at his ranch. He's going to be teaching some of the skill sets of High Rock. So looking forward to joining that there. And of course, all the people here as well are going to be joining on. So it's going to be a great series. Hopefully you can learn a thing or two. And let me know if you need anything else specifically. See you in the next episode. Bye. We're going to do a 90 second rest, eight reps, and then 4K chill. Eight seconds.